Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to welcome everyone to our humble beginning. We cannot stretch enough on how much we appreciate your presence today at a very, very difficult time. With the pandemic, as I'm still very much abiding, knackering everyone's behavior. But today is a time for celebration, a time for celebration for the Isol Christian Academy and all the people involved in the process. So without much further ado, I request the chief guest, Reverend Dr. D.M. Spurgeon, United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia, New York, to inaugurate this Isol Christian Academy and unveil the plate. Uh, to the glory of God and for the joy and welfare of the people of Mizoram, India, and the world as well, we inaugurate this Aizal Christian Academy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we are so grateful that you have made us all in your image, given us gifts and talents with which to serve you. Thank you for the lives of our Patsuna and his wife, Lalzuali, and all the years we shared with them. We leave them to you today as we inaugurate this institution of learning in honor of the good we saw in them and the love we felt from them. Give us, O oh Lord, the strength to continue their good works by your care and in the knowledge of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Let us all say, Amen. On behalf of the Board of Governors, the Board of Academic Advisors, the Administration of Isol Christian Academy, and the family of the late Arpan Suma, I welcome you warmly to Christian Southwest Chapel for the inaugural service of this academy and to the dedication of this chapel. 
We gather in this house of prayer to dedicate this space and ourselves to the service of learning, thanking God for his guidance in the past and to affirm our faith. Today we look to God for the development of this institution, the imparting of education and the common future in which all might flourish. So we pray for God's guidance. We seek the gifts of an imagination that can hope abundantly and a courage to seize that hope. Confident in the riches of His grace, we unite with hope under God. Therefore, let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, 
knowing from whom you learn it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is spread out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Here ends the lesson. This is the day that the Lord made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Respected ladies and gentlemen, my first word today is a word of thanks and gratitude. First, to our almighty and faithful God who has granted us this blessed day of joy, the inauguration day of this Aizhou Christian Academy, which we established in his holy name. We thank once again for his generous blessings upon the family of the late Al Bashuma, who is the son of Christian Chalduaya. Who Chalduaya had suffered a lot for the sake of Christ or for being a Christian in the first era of Christianity in Mizoram. Today, we are harvesting the fruit of such forbearance in the life of Uchal Boya. He was ousted from his village because of his faith in Christ to be a vagabond or a wanderer for quite some time and somehow settled at Bang or Bakro village. So this academic chapel is dedicated to him. We thank God for the faithful and dedicated life of Uchal Boya, each son of which we have been blessed today through his grandson who learned in Guyana, who Marina, who founded this institution. So, may I request Umarina to stand for his place, representing the whole family, and let us thank him with a big clap. Thank you. Um, so today, we are privileged to have a Reverend Dr. B.M. Spurgeon, who grace our inaugural function as our chief guest. I feel proud and lucky to say that Reverend Dr. Spurgeon is an old and good friend of mine since we together are the main instruments of God for the placement of Mizoram Synod Pastor as a chaplain in the Madras Christian College when he himself was a chaplain in MCC. Reverend Dr. Spurgeon is presently called a very prestigious post of consultant and director of South Asia, United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia, based in New York. As I have said, he was a chaplain of Madras Christian College before, and ordained minister of the Church of South India. Dr. Spurgeon received an honorary award from the most Reverend Justin Kennedy, Archbishop of Canterbury, UK. So it is my proud privilege to welcome him today in this historical occasion of ISO Christian Academy. May I also request him to stand for his seat and study a proud him if you can. Okay. Thank you, Reverend Dr. William Spurgeon, for being with us today. So then I would like to welcome the moderator of the Mizoram Synod, Reverend Dr. Sila Hira. Reverend Hira was ordained in the year 1990 and spent most of his service in teaching ministry. He was prophet. 
successor of as of the Zaraqalis for many years, all in different administrative posts such as Registrar, Vice Principal, and Principal of the College. After serving in the Pemis for about two years in the Sunday Pastorate, he is now in the director of the Synod. I, on behalf of the management of Isaac Christian Academy, welcome you here and thank you for sparing your time to grace this function, humble function today. Will you please stand and let us do in a different way. So today we are very blessed by the presence of the most Reverend Stephen Rokiwama CSC, the Bishop of Aizawa. Bishop Stephen Rokiwama will ordain for the Ministry of the Word and Sacrament on the 13th of December 1981 and consecrated to be the Bishop on the 2nd of February 2002. Our Bishop is the, is the first among Nijo to be ordained as a Bishop. So we Nijo people are so proud of him. Please join me to welcome him with a big hand while the Bishop kindly stands from his seat. Thank you, Bishop. So I recognize the presence of Nijo Bintuama. Where is he? Yeah. Thank you, Bishop Bintuama. He is a MLA and the leader of Progressive Legislative Party in our assembly, and he is elected from Kowlam uh, constituency. And now I would like to welcome Lieutenant Colonel Lolian Kuma, who is now one of the three cabinet members of the territorial headquarters as the program secretary. Actually, he is a BD graduate from Gurukul Theological College, another product from Mother Chennai, I think. So, I know him as a program director of CHAN and the territorial contract person of anti-human trafficking in the Salvation Army and also contract, territorial contract person for moral and social justice. He used to be the principal of the officers' training college also. So may I request Lieutenant Colonel Kuma to stand up so that we can welcome him to the And now, <coughs> it is my proud privilege to welcome Reverend Dr. Aro Samoya. He is now the Executive Secretary of DCM, ISO. Reverend Hatana was ordained in the year 1996. He is a New, Test New Testament scholar, getting his MPH and BPH from United Theological College, Bangalore. He was teaching New Testament in AICS, AICS for many years, and he was also Mission Field Director in the new Mission Field before he joined his present placement in the year 2019. So may I request the Dr. Aro Samuel to stand up from his seat. So Salim, welcome you. Thank you. Uh -huh. So I recognize the presence of our church leaders from different places, <laughs> from FEC and other pastorate within and outside ISO. Warmly welcome them and thank you for your presence today. And the rest are the well wisher of this academy and the local prominent citizens of the locality today. So I thank you all for sparing your time for this humble but very important and historical occasion of the academy. Thank you so much.
Let us pray. O eternal God, mighty in power, of majesty incomprehensible, whom the heaven of heavens cannot contain, much less the walls of temples nailed with hands, and who yet has been graciously pleased to promise them, thy special presence, in whatsoever place even two or three of thy faithful servants shall assemble in thy name to offer up their supplications and their praises to Thee, O Chief, O Lord, to be present with us, who are now gathered together to dedicate this place with all humility and readiness of heart, to the honour of Thy great name, dedicating it henceforth to Thy service, for reading therein Thy most holy word, for celebrating Thy holy gifts, for offering to Thy great glorious majesty, the sacrifice of prayer and thanksgiving, and for blessing thy people in thy name. Accept, O Lord, the service at our hands, and bless it with us such success as may most tend to thy glory and salvation of thy people. Through Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Saviour. Amen. Let us pray, O most gracious God, whom the heaven of heavens cannot contain, graciously accept the dedication of this place to thy service, and grant that all who shall call upon thee here may worship thee in spirit and in truth, and may in their lives show forth thy grace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen.
Please speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Our dear friends, I greet you all in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And indeed, it's a great joy and privilege for me to be here this day with you, celebrating this event, inaugurating the Israel Christian Academy of my own beloved student and scholar, Lost and Daniela Ralte. And it's also a great joy that we have ecumenical leaders with us, the bishop, moderator, other, other church leaders. And I bring greetings from my state, Tamil Nadu, which celebrates New Year today. And also from my church, Church of South India, to all the church leaders here and to the family of Ralte and all those who gather here. And it's a great joy again that I was born and brought up in Anglican tradition, though we belong to Church of South India. Church of South India has different churches. They all came together in 1947 and formed Church of South India. But predominantly Anglican. My diocese was an Anglican diocese. And Anglican in the Presbyterian campus. And when we were young people, we were told the story. Uh, an Anglican missionary one day, he came in his horse on a journey to a village and it became very dark in the evening. And the people there suggested that he can stay in another missionary compound which is close by. And this Anglican missionary, when he went near that compound, he found that it was a Presbyterian compound. Then the Anglican missionary told those people, no, I can't stay there because my horse will not eat the grass in that compound. So that was the trend even today outside India, that Anglican horses even cannot eat grasses in Presbyterian campus. But thankfully, in India we are together and we celebrate with ecumenism. It's a great joy and thank uh, Dr. Lord Sanjayana Ralte and his family for giving me this great opportunity. I also pay my tribute to the grandparents of Lord Sanjayana and I remember with gratitude their life and their contribution and services to the Miso community and to the world at large. Educational institutions in these days changes or shifts their focus. When the Christian education, if you remember the history when they were founded, different schools and colleges in different parts of the world, they were founded with the main aim of preparing people for life. Preparing people for life. But unfortunately, this focus has been shifted to preparing people for livelihood alone. I don't say that livelihood is not important. Even Jesus said that it's not bread alone. That means bread is also important. But that alone does not make a life. So education primarily is preparing people for livelihood as well as for life. When you have your livelihood without having skill to live a life, life in abundance, there's no use of that livelihood. And I'm so happy that Aizal Christian Academy is founded with that vision. I saw in the brochure that it's not, it's, it's a preparing people, young people for life and not only for livelihood. Then how do you prepare them? I just want to spend a few minutes by dwelling on the words which we have heard read to us in the Gospel reading in your own language in Luke chapter uh, 2 verse 52. Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. When God created, when God created human beings, He created human beings in His own image. After a solemn consultation, He said that let us create human in our own image. Other creatures were not created in the image of God, but we were all created in the image of God. How do we understand this image of God? It's a whole person. It's not only one aspect can make the image of God, but it is a whole person. In what way human beings are different 
from other creatures. Because human being is created in the image of God, we are distinctly different from other creatures. Number one, the first aspect in human as image of God is the intellectual aspect. Apart from physical nature and all, I just want to take four aspects which are important. First one is intellectual aspect. God is an intellectual being and therefore all those who are created in the image of God, we naturally inherit that intellectual capacity from God. We are intellectual. Unfortunately, we live in a world in which the intelligence is equated with the marks which we gain or the grade which we get. So intellectual capacity is something which, which is very different. There are two abilities which we get in this intellectual capacity which we have directly derived from God. Number one is an ability to think. The ability to think. It's a thinking process. God first thought this idea of human being was originated in God's mind. He, he said that let us make human being in our own image. In our own image. That's the thought which came in his own mind. Then he acted. Idea of marriage was originated in God's mind, thinking. He saw Adam sitting alone. Then he thought to himself, oh, it's not good for Adam to be alone. Then he created the right companion. So thinking is it's, it's, it's God's gift to human beings. Thinking ability. So as we, we, we facilitate our children to grow intellectually, academy should be a place where the thinking ability should be encouraged. There are three levels of thinking. One is creative. Creative thinking. God is creative. And remember, in the Old Testament, in the Genesis, we read that God acted for six days, created everything, and he took rest on the seventh day, Sabbath day. And from then, he rested. But the God's work continues in this world because he had created human beings in his own image. And he had given that creativity to human beings in the human beings because they were created in the image of God. So science even is a gift of God. New creation is a gift from God because human beings are created in the God's image. They have this creativity, creative thinking. So let this academy encourage creativity among the young children. It's not memorizing and vomiting. That's not the education. That's not the education which we want but education which encourages creativity on young people. Creativity. And secondly, reflection. Reflective thinking. One of the areas in which we are becoming very weak is because of the busy world. We don't take time to reflect on the things which are happening. We don't take time to reflect on the word of God. We don't take time to reflect on the lives of people. And we don't take time to reflect on the happenings of the events which happen in our life and understand why do they happen in our life. So reflection is important. And that ability is given to human beings as the image of God. So reflective, reflective thinking. Number three is critical thinking. This is again a gift from God. One of the, one of the thinking which is suppressed, which is being suppressed in Indian context now is this critical thinking. People do not want critical mass. And they do not want universities to be critical. You might remember what happened to some of the professors in Ahsoka University. Nobody wants, nobody encourages critical thinking. But as an educator, it's important that we encourage critical thinking among our young people so that they establish a just society. So that they grow with courage to agitate against the injustice in the society. Injustice we see all over the world, but people have become indifferent. We become indifferent to the injustices around us because we are not encouraging the critical thinking. 
They are not encouraging critical thinking. That results that if somebody attacks a girl on the road, thousand people will watch and go. They become indifferent. So critical thinking is very very important. Thinking ability. And the second ability in the intellectual aspect is the communication ability. God has given us an ability to communicate what we think in our mind. It's not only thinking, and I can share what I have in my mind with others. Communication skill. One of the skills which everybody looks for is a communication skill. It's not only a language skill, it's, it's a skill which is beyond language skill. And let this academy, Eyes of Christian Academy, develop the communication skill among the young people so that they not only think critically, creatively and reflective thinking, they share their thought with the people and for a common good. Sharing my thinking for a common good is important. That's actually Christian. I can have my own thoughts, but I can use my thought only for myself. But communication helps us to use that, my personal property, for the common good. My personal intellectual property for the common good. So that's, that's the value which we need to have as we develop or inaugurate this academy. The second aspect in the image of God is morality. God is a moral being. And therefore, naturally, those who are created in the image of God, all of us, we naturally become moral beings. That's one of the reasons God is expecting. And he says that I am holy, and therefore you also be holy. <laughs> Sometimes we may think that how is it possible for us to be holy like God? We are all the image of God. And we are expected to be moral in this world. This is directly linked with intellectual capacity. Because the animal behavior, you take the behaviors of the human and animal. Animal behavior is usually guided and directed by instinct. And instinct creates a desire, the animal fulfills. The instinct creates a desire, that's the thirst, the animal becomes thirsty, it drinks water, whatever is available. Whether it is muddy water or good water, it's not bothered. The animal is thirsty, a dog becomes thirsty, it drinks water which is available. But as a human being, because we have intellectual capacity, thinking ability, we think before we act. We think before we act. Our instinct might give several desires. I may have that thirstiness now, but I will not drink whatever water is available. If the water is muddy, I will not drink because my intellect will tell me. That's, that's part of morality. Instinct will create even the another best example is the sex desire. An animal instinct creates the sex desire in an animal, and animal fulfills with whatever is available, whether it's its own mother or sister, that's no difference for an animal. Whereas for a human being, we have a responsibility. We cannot be simply guided by the instinct because we have an intellect to discriminate and decide, make a decision. So morality is facilitating people to make the right choice and also facilitating people to make the right decision. And morality goes along with the freedom. In God's creation narrative, he has beautifully described this. He wanted Adam and Eve to be a moral beings in the Garden of Eden. He gave them responsibility. And he placed them and he gave them full freedom. He gave them full freedom. So morality has to be built along with freedom. It's, it's not, uh, morality is not something which is in the absence of freedom. That, that's not morality. God gave absolute freedom. He gave a guideline. He said, eat all the fruits, but don't eat only this particular fruit. He could have put a fence around that tree, restricted the freedom. He did not do that. He gave Adam and Eve full freedom. He did not have any fence. Or he could have put a monitor or prefect in our academic context. Angel Gabriel put, could have been appointed as a prefect or the monitor in Garden of Eden. And uh, if these people go near that tree, please come and tell me. He did not do that. Gave full freedom. Gave full freedom. He also gave them choice. 
Imagine God could have avoided creating that particular tree. If that tree was not created, Adam and Eve would not have had chance to eat that fruit. But there was no choice. Freedom has meaning only when you have a choice. Well, when you do not have a choice, there is no freedom. You are forced to do certain things. But God gave them choice. God's intention was that Adam and Eve should be able to decide by themselves without any external agency. That's the freedom. That I do not need an external agency to regulate my behavior. I have a self-regulated system within me to regulate my own behavior. That's actually the freedom. Freedom is not something to do whatever you want or all kinds of things, but freedom is, is responsibility. That's what God expresses. Morality means utilizing freedom in the right way. Developing a kind of self-regulated system. If we bring in a behavior through different conditions, conditional behavior we call it. If you bring in a behavior with so much of conditions and monitoring, in the absence of those conditions and monitoring system, you cannot expect that behavior. If the parents are very strict in the presence of the parents, children will behave properly. But once they are, they are left in the absence of the parents, there is no guarantee of the same behavior. So conditional behavior is not morality. Uh, when I was working in Madras Christian College, I used to check with students and ask them how, many time, how much time they spend to read every day or study every day after the college hours. They look at me and they would smile at me or laugh at me. Because no college students read or studies after the college hours. That's a fact, you know, that if you come to colleges, you will understand. I don't know what's happening in Mizoram state. Nobody will study. College students will never study. They will take the book only on the previous day of the examination, internal or external. But I also used to check with them another, another question. They would have come just from the plus two or the higher secondary. Higher secondary into the college first year. In the first year, they don't read anything at all. But in the plus two, I used to check with them how much time did you spend after the school hours for reading and studying. Invariably, our students in Tamil Nadu, State Board students will say they used to sit four to five hours after the school hours for studies, plus two. They go to tuition and then they study, study, study. Once they enter into the college, two months of gap, summer vacation, they are totally transformed. Why? Because that was a conditional behavior. Condition because in the school, test, 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 every day, teachers pressurize. And in Tamil Nadu, some of our parents, we also become terrorist parents. When the children come to plus two, we say that there's no TV in the house, nothing, no play, nothing, study, study, study. If you don't study, I will shoot down. And some of our parents will also say, oh, this is very important year for you in life. If you study well in this year, then you can relax. That's what they will do. So when, when those conditions are absent, you don't expect that behavior. So morality means something which comes along with the freedom. Comes along with freedom. So that's, that's morality. In Chennai city, some of you might have come, I am sure that moderator here and other leaders, Rake and others know this. In Chennai city, in Chennai city we get traffic signals. In the traffic signals, when there is red, you should not go. You have to wait for green signal. <laughs> in the morning, if you go, you will see, we will have red dialogue. I was uh, standing you know, on Sunday morning, I was going for the worship. I was standing there in my car, waiting for the green signal. And how to follow? He came very fast. He went very fast. And because there was nobody, and at the back, I saw that my presence are go with him. Because in, in uh, Tamil Nadu, in the vehicles, we have a habit of writing these biblical verses at the back of the vehicle. Right? I was asking, so what is the morality we have? Suppose, if there is a police officer in the traffic signal, and nobody moves, we all wait for the green signal to come. But the absence of traffic officer, police officer, you break the rule. That's not morality. Whether you have a traffic police or not, 
you have inbuilt system which will say that balanced red signal don't go. And that kind of morality is needed, the world in which we live. That only can create a just society. It's not by force you bring in a behavior, but by freedom you bring in the right behavior. And in the morality, the second aspect is responsibility. People should be willing to take responsibilities, not shifting, because we are responsible for our behavior. We are an image of God and therefore we become 100% responsible for our own behavior. I am responsible for my behavior. This is what God is expecting. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve had eaten that fruit, God came there to the Garden of Eden and asked Adam a simple question, close-ended question. What did he ask? Adam, did you eat the fruit which I have asked you not to eat? What should have been the answer? It's a very close-ended question. Answer should be either yes or no. Isn't it? He was asking one close-ended question. Did you eat the fruit which I have asked not to eat? But what did Adam say? He said, he shifted the responsibility. He said, imagine if Adam had said, sorry Lord, I have eaten it. Our story would have been different. Cross would have happened in the Garden of Eden. Right, repentance. Says, I am sorry, God, I have done something wrong. The, the whole human history is different. But Adam shifted, he shifted the responsibility not only on women, but to God Himself. He was asking God, You gave that woman. Did I ask for a woman? I didn't ask for a woman. You gave me a woman, and she gave me the fruit. I ate it. Who is responsible? Who is responsible? You are responsible. So this, this is happening even today. Shifting the responsibility. We don't take responsibility of our own behavior. Morality means that people will make mistakes. Human beings, we may, yes, we may make mistakes. But the moment we take responsibility, our problems are solved. So morality means helping young people to understand the freedom and use the freedom in the right way. And number two, make them a responsible citizen. That's a primary focus of any academy. That is, Isaiah Christian Academy create responsible citizens for Mizoram State and for our nation and to the world. And number three, in the image of God, social being. God is a relational being, social being. He always used to relate, even in the, at the time of creation, he said, let us, he was associating himself with triune. And he used to relate with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, relationship. And he wanted Adam and Eve to relate with one another, relate with the animals and relate with the environment. So relationship, again, is unique. Human relation is unique. It's not animal relation. Animal relationship, it's, it's, it's different in the sense that it's only one relationship. Ultimately, it, in, it, it centers around the sex. Baby animal and mother animal, they may have relationship, but once the baby animals become adult animals, then the relationship changes. They see the mother or the sister only as a sexual partner, nothing else. But for a human being, there are innumerable kinds of relationships. I live with three women, if I say that, that means I live with my mother, my wife, my daughter. All the three are women, but there are three kinds of relationship. And I may have colleagues in my office, women colleagues. So there are different kinds of relationship. And relating with one another is an ability which we have received inherited from God. We have inherited from God. And those days, we got this relationship skill naturally. I'm, I'm happy that still in Mizo culture, you are a family oriented culture. But the people are like us, in Tamil Nadu and all, that we are deviating so much. We learned that. My own example I used to tell always as an example to the present generation. That my mother had 14 siblings. My own mother, she was the eldest in the home. And she had 13 after that, brothers and sisters. And my father had seven. 
and the seven, almost all of us, all of them lived together. My, my father's elder brother, elder brother, and my aunt, my father's own sister. Four families we lived in the same village, and I have fifty-six cousins. Fifty-six first cousins, direct cousins. And when we used to be in the school, when we come home, my parents were both were teachers of elementary schools. When we come home, if my mother is not there. I will go to some other house and eat something. It was not an issue. So we learned the relationship still naturally because there was provision. But now I have only one daughter, and from my side and my wife's side, she has only four cousins. And we always live alone. The little point. So the opportunity for young people to learn the relationship skill from their family. Background of uh, in in their living is come down, has come down tremendously, and therefore it becomes responsibility of the academy and schools and colleges to encourage them to relate with others. It's mandatory that they get an ability to relate with others, especially people with those who are different from us. Relating with people those who are similar to us is very easy. But relating with someone who is entirely different from us, it's an ability, it's a skill which we have inherited from God, and that has to be developed. And let this academy develop relationship skill. And finally, spirituality, spiritual. Human being is a spiritual being. God is spirit, and those who are created in the image of God, we naturally become spiritual. We have the ability to connect ourselves with God. Connecting spirituality, it's not religiosity. It's not the religiosity which which I am talking about. Religiosity is might divide us. I can say that in the beginning I said that I am an Anglican, you are a Presbyterian. He is a Roman Catholic. He is a Salvation Army. All that based on religious ceremonies and customs, religiosity might bring the but spirituality is something which is beyond this religiosity. Spirituality, which helps us to connect ourselves to God, the Creator. Connect ourselves to God the Creator. That connection is very important. That connection is the base. That connection is the base because unless I relate myself with God the Creator, then I might use the intellectual capacity I have for destructive purposes. Intelligence can be used for destruction. Terrorist groups they use it for destruction. But if I relate myself with God, the Creator, I use my intelligence for constructive purposes. I use my skills and abilities and intellectual capacities for others, for common good. Because I relate with my Creator, and I understand that the same Creator has created others also. So that becomes a responsibility on my part. So I am able to connect with others. Connection with God, connect with others. Connection to our own self. It's also necessary that we need to connect to our own self. And very important in the spirituality, understanding the meaning and purpose of life. Spirituality is the one which helps us to understand the meaning and purpose of life. We have so many people in this world now; they don't even know the meaning and purpose of life. And it is mandatory that we need to young children should be trained in such a way that they try understand the meaning and purpose of life. God has definite purpose in each one of us. He has created each one of us in His own image with a definite purpose, and that I need to understand. Then whatever happens in my life will have a meaning. I can understand meaning of whatever happens in my life only when I understand. The larger purpose of my life, purpose of my life. It's, it's God's purpose. It's God's purpose. Lord Pandya Navrathi did not choose his grandparents. Did not choose his parents. Did he? Did he choose? He did not choose. You did not choose to be born in Mizoram. Did he choose? I did not choose to be born in Tamil. I could have been born as a Mizoram. Or I could have been born in America. Not did my parents choose me. Did your parents choose you? It's God's choice. 
is God's choice. And it is God's choice that Dr. Raul Sandler and Avalche became the grandparents of these two people and was born in this family because God had a purpose of creating an academy in this place through this man, even before his birth. Even before. That's why he says that I know you before you are, before you are born. That we need to understand. That's the purpose we need to understand. So academy is helping young people to understand the meaning and purpose of their life. Then they become a blessing to the world. They become a blessing to the world. So they go out as a whole person, intellectually grown, morally upright, and socially relevant, spiritually matured, will go out from this academy. And Jesus Christ is an example for that. That's what we read in the Gospel. He grew in wisdom, in stature, and favor with God and men. He grew intellectually. He was in this chapter, if you go through that, he was con having conversation with the religious leaders. He was questioning them, intellectual curiosity. He was learning. He was intellectually sound. And he had relationship skill. Remember that he was missing for three days. Parents did not bother. Because parents knew that he is good in relationship. He will be with other people. And he was always helping other people. And spiritually he was always, all the places he said that, I am my father. <laughs> he never separated himself from the father. Connection between him and his father. That's very, very important. And may God bless each one of us. And let this Eyes of Christian Academy produce image of God for Mizoram and for the country and for the world. And once again, I thank each one of you and I congratulate again Dr. Raul Sangliana Valse for founding this institution, Aisha Christian Academy, and made this academy create so many people, leaders for the future. May God bless Aisha Christian Academy. May God bless all of you. Amen. We all stand to profess our faith through the Nicene Creed, found on page 14. Page 14. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, <coughs> begotten not made, being of all substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for the salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end and I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I acknowledge and baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Glory of God and for the joy of praising Him, I release this English Mizo hymnal for the use of this academy and for the 
wider uh, community of nerves. This is Let us, let us pray. Loving and merciful God, our Father, on this historic and joyful occasion of the inauguration and dedication of this ISO Christian Academy and Institute of Learning and building ourselves as people of God, we raise our hearts and mind in profound joy to you, our merciful God. We invoke your blessing upon this institute of learning, the dean and all the staff members and those that you put in charge of to begin this place, center of learning and formation. So that this Aizol Academy, uh, Christian Academy, may be a fine example of not only academic excellence, but also of genuine personality development, educating not only the mind, but also the heart, Lord, imparting not only quality, but also your gospel, scripture values, teaching not merely to be successful, but to be humane and be compassionate. Learning not simply to be efficient and effective humanly, but also to be a person of integrity, moral, spiritual integrity, and not only fulfilling one's aspirations, but to become an inspiration for all others and serving not only the bright and the strong, but serving especially the weak and the poor. May this ISO Christian Academy, may all stand for and be an agent of social, spiritual and religious transformation, always forming your people and all those who come in this institution, empowering them to become an agent of conscientization in the struggle for justice and true brotherhood in the world that is so divisive and so broken to a just society towards your greater kingdom, so that all those who are here may be spiritually God-oriented, morally upright, socially aware, and culturally distinct and nationally integrated. Bless all that gather here and all those in future and generation to come to be blessed by your true values, the human, spiritual, and religious values. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
first of all, I'd like to thank Chief Guest Ren Dr. Rudyam Spurgeon, who came all the way from Chennai. Thank you, sir. And <coughs> Anita, staff from Heaven, Dr. Wesley, here and here. It's a big win, yeah. Let us read the litany responsibly for the peace that is from above and for the salvation of our souls and for the peace of the whole world, especially our country and our neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Lord have mercy. For the endeavor and life of the Reverend William Williams, the forerunner to our final missionaries, for the life and contributions of the and the Reverend J. H. Loring, our pioneer missionaries, in bringing the good news of Jesus Christ, upliftment of the society, and the imparting of education to the people of this land. We thank you, Lord. For all the educational institutions in India, especially of those in Mizoram, that they may strive in educating the youth with the fear of God in their hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, the fountain of our will, all wisdom, who knows our necessities before we ask, and provide more than what we need. Receive our supplications and pray. 
prayers which he offered unto you. All these we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we all stand for the benediction. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the people of Mizoram, our nation, India and all people, peace and comfort, and to us sinners, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.